here we have two very different trees, two very different types of trees. So how do we draw them that we actually capture the difference in the tree species that we have? That if these trees were right next to each other or even overlapping, that in some way we would have captured the fact that they're not the same type of tree because they would look different. Let me run through a number of points that I look for when I have a tree to draw either as the main subject or as one of the elements of a scene because these are the things which when I draw it will make this tree look different to this tree or at least to the degree I capture what I'm seeing and thinking about. Now the first thing to look at is the overall shape of a tree. We're looking for the general pattern and in this first tree generally it's a cone shape on a stick and it's very dense. When we look at the canopy there is very little sky coming through from the other side. That where there are some gaps in the leaves, generally there aren't gaps on the other side of the tree at that spot. And so we see a pattern of leaves and shadow, leaves and shadow. And it is a pattern because another one of the characteristics are the tonal values and how they're distributed, the lights and the darks. And if we look at this tree, and we just look at it in terms of lights and darks, we see we have these quite rounded spots of shadow with this ridge that runs around them where the leaves are catching the sunlight. It's a bit like a sort of honeycomb effect. Now, if we look at this tree, which is an Australian gum tree, we see this particular gum tree does have a fairly rounded canopy on top, although there are smaller rounded clumps lower down the tree. But we certainly see a lot more of the trunk and branching of this tree than of this tree. In fact, these are two trunks that come from a fork down here. Now with this gum tree, again, the canopy is quite dense, but we can see that the light penetrates right through in more places and we can actually see branches which are catching the light within the canopy. And when we look at the overall tonal values, what we see is that we have these large clumps that capture the light on the side facing the sun and then are shaded or in shadow underneath. But what we also often find is where we're looking at clumps of foliage on the other side of the tree canopy, such as here, depending on where the sun is and where shadow is being cast, they can also be completely in shadow. And so we have different pattern of dark and light values here than we get here. Another important thing I look for is what I call the leaf attachment structure. How are the leaves attached to the twigs? Because this can hugely impact how a tree looks. There are many leaves, such as our eucalypt friend here, where the leaves hang down from their attachment to the branch. But then there are other trees where the leaves tend to stand upright with some rigidity because of the way they attach to the twigs that they're on. And this creates a very different effect when we look at the tree to this. And in this tree on the left, we have a more rigid attachment. And this impacts one of the key visual elements of a tree that we want to capture when we're drawing, and that's the silhouette. The silhouettes of any object are important because they always attract more attention. So we want to give silhouettes a little extra care in our observation and our line work. But when we look at the silhouette of a tree, we can see here that there is a much more toothy up and down effect on our silhouette edge than we get on this tree, on our eucalyptus. And sometimes the pattern can be quite rigid in one part of a leaf cluster and then hang much more loosely in another part of the same leaf cluster. It all depends how the leaves attach to the branches. And we don't have to have a close-up view so that we can work it out. We're looking for the effect because when we draw trees, primarily we're drawing the effect. 
So I don't have to know exactly how these leaves attach to the branches to know that it's a somewhat more rigid upward facing or at least more stiffly attached to the branch effect than I can see on this eucalyptus. The other thing that's important when we look at a tree is to get a sense of the scale. Is it a really large tree or is it a small tree? And how large are the actual leaves? Can you really see individual leaves when we look at the tree or not? Because if, as in the case with both these trees, we really can't see an individual leaf. When I draw my tree, I don't want to be making little shapes that look like leaves. Because if I were to draw this tree with perhaps, let's call it a leaf pattern that looks like this, the effect would be to make this tree look a lot smaller, 50 times smaller than it really is. So I need to put marks on the paper that will reflect the fact that these individual marks are not leaves. I personally often find that the most challenging part of all of drawing a tree. Now, of course, we don't have to worry too much about branching in a tree such as this. Beyond making sure that we don't have the trunk too thick or too thin for the size of the tree, we don't have any visible branching to worry about. But in a tree where we do, of course, we need to make sure that the proportions of the trunk and the amount of branching that we draw are appropriate for the size of the canopy so that whatever thickness we have down here has room to become a tiny twig at the very edge. And we also want to be aware that some of these clumps such as this one here are coming straight out at us. We need to always be aware that this is in effect the top half of a ball and that's the shape I'm trying to draw. So some of the canopy such as these bits here and these bits here are much closer than these bits here and certainly than these bits here. So let's draw these two trees now using all of those thoughts in our line work. And see if we can't capture something of the difference in how our drawings of the trees look. I start really trying to get an outline of the major elements of a tree. That's not just the outside of the leaf line, if you like, but it's also whatever large shapes shadow and shade form within the various parts of the tree canopy. I find that by establishing, if you like, guidelines for the overall shape of the tree and of the shadows in it, I can then, when I start to do my hatching to emphasize or to create the shade and the shadows and something of the leaf pattern, I find that I can concentrate on establishing that without worrying so much that I'm going to end up creating a weird looking tree. So it gives me one thing to focus on at a time. In this case, I basically establish the width of the tree and then I go up and I go down. And I do that because I find that often lets me create overall better proportions that in going up and going down, there's less space for error to creep in. I'm also trying to work out exactly the hatching I'm going to use to create the effect of these fairly rigid clumps of leaves that have a fairly upright habit to them. And so with the silhouettes that I'm sort of just drawing in now, I'm, I'm trying to get a fairly toothy, rigid look to them. Almost a sculptural shape to this tree. And so it's not just in the silhouette, but it's also in the shapes that are defined by the hatching and even in the direction of the hatching as well. Every line we put on paper is creating an effect. I wasn't going to, but I put this little fence across the front because I thought, look, even in just a little sketch such as this, it helps create a sense of scale, which can be helpful with trees because it can be difficult to get a sense of size if we just have the tree itself. So I thought it would certainly help me if no one else to put that fence in. And now I continue up and I define the overall shape of the tree. Now with trees, unless there's something really special about the tree, I don't get too worked up over making it exactly as it should be. I try and get the silhouette exactly representative as it should be, but it doesn't have to be super, super precise according to the, the picture. But the reason I try to do as much as I can is because the proportion of shade and shadow 
and light is often indicative of the scale of the tree. So I try and get it approximately so that my tree has a better chance of looking the right size, but I'm not overly concerned if any particular part doesn't look right. And sometimes when we're doing this, we accidentally create faces with the shadows and the light. And I always try and get rid of faces. Uh, it's, it's a bigger problem in painting um, when you finish a tree and find out there's a big face smiling at you from the bark or something. Painting trees is actually wonderful preparation for drawing them because it gets us thinking in terms of tone and tonal value rather than line. So how do you think this is looking? So now we'll draw our second tree and I'm employing the same technique. I'm establishing something of a silhouette around the outside of the tree, but also of the major shadow areas. I'm feeling a bit rushed for time as I draw this for various reasons. And so it's not quite as the same as in the photo as the other one was, but I'm not overly concerned with that because gosh, there is no set shape for a gum tree, let me tell you. But we do want to capture the sense of blue sky coming through the various clumps of canopy because that's very much a eucalypt characteristic. And certainly when I used to paint these before I started drawing, it was always fun punching in, as I used to think of it, the blue sky between the various shadowed canopies that were in the background. I'm working at putting some shadow on the trunks to try and create a sense of three dimensions to help me just work a little bit more accurately with the line work on the canopy. So as you can see, it's a much smoother line that I've used to define the canopy and my hatching for the parts of the canopy in shade and in shadow is a lot more one directional, which I'm hoping will create a somewhat softer effect and also reflect the fact that these leaves are basically hanging down. So while the lines I don't think are in any danger of looking like leaves, I'm hoping it creates the sense of the, the overall shape of the, and the visual effect of the way the leaves are hanging without looking like lots of long skinny leaves. And so now it's a similar thing to what I did before where I'm really concentrating more on drawing the shadows, on creating shapes with my hatching that echo the darker shapes in the canopy. It's helpful just to think of in terms of drawing the negative space, drawing the shadowed space and not thinking about so much the shape of the canopies themselves. So at this stage, it's, it's really just back and forth, back and forth until I think it looks enough like a gum tree. Uh, and in the spaces where there's larger amounts of the canopy in the light, it can be helpful to put little dots and dabs and dashes and tiny shadow bits to reflect the uneven surface that does still catch in parts light. So how do you think the gum tree looks? So using these points that we talked about earlier in the video to get a particular understanding of how a particular tree is formed and therefore the best way to make our marks on our paper to capture the effect of that particular tree, how have we gone with these two trees, drawing them so that they look different? Well, what do you think? Do you have a sense that these are not the same species, not just because of the very clearly different shape and trunk, but just because of the way the line work make the trees feel and look, but also because of the effect that the different line work used in drawing them creates. Why not go to my community page and get the two reference photos and have a go at drawing them yourself and seeing how much distinction you can do your line work to capture the different characteristics of these two trees. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers, but whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.